is really scary to me. But I just stay on my bunk and just mind my business. It's like a fish in a tank full of sharks. A new inmate fears the worst. Being in a gang, it's not something that I choose to run behind. It's the choice that I made, and it's something that I joined. A gang member asks for help to change his life. But first, he must convince a staff member with plenty of his own experience on the inside. So they say, Ron, you don't understand it. You don't know, understand what I'm going through. I can say, wait a minute, I was here. I was in the same color shirt as you was, and now I know what it takes to live a better life. And... You done, heck yeah! He is very comfortable here. He's been here so much, it's like his second home. The most arrested man in Sacramento, heck yeah! Gotta be proud of something. Nestled along the gleaming skyline of downtown Sacramento is a block-wide, nine-story tall building that exemplifies the term, no frills. This is the main branch of the Sacramento County jail system. Housed inside are some 2,000 men and women, most of whom have only been accused of crimes and are awaiting trial or the resolution of their cases. One of two jails under the supervision of Sacramento County Sheriff Scott Jones. The downtown branch contains the main booking department, where new arrestees are processed, booked, and more times than not, sobered up. We have about 58,000 bookings a year in this county, and we track folks that come in to custody either intoxicated or under the influence of drugs. It's remained fairly steady between 75 and 80 percent of the folks that get booked in are under the influence of, of drugs or alcohol. Well, I see we have the usual cast of characters. They're on the influence, they're unstable on their feet. We're going to place them in this cell for their own safety. It's a padded room in there. Um, once they've sobered up enough to finish the process, they'll get pulled out of this tank and moved on. 13 hours earlier, the sobering cell was occupied by the man who has probably spent more time in it than anyone else over the past 20 years. Chris LaForce was arrested for public intoxication. His latest probation violation on top of dozens of prior violations and convictions related to drugs or alcohol. His arrests are well over a thousand arrests for our county. Uh, Coming gets brought in, he's very vocal, very loud. Heck yeah! Very intoxicated. He knows most of us by name. <laughs> he is very comfortable here. He's been here so much, it's like his second home. He's homeless out on the street, so th this is almost better than what he's got when he's out. I was like, right on. <laughs> Out on the streets, he's known for a drunken public, lighting things on fire, sometimes being combative, meth use, drug use, alcohol use. But he knows that when he does that, he comes here and he has a place to sleep, a place to eat. It's kind of a drag on how our system actually works, knowing that we're going to arrest the same person with the same charges over a thousand times. Other than that, obviously, bring him here and keeps him off the street away from the public, so that's the good part of it. LaForce remembers the day one of his arrests made the local newspaper. That was in 856 arrests. The metro section of the Sacramento Bee mentioned my name five times. Heck yeah, they said you got her done. The most arrested man in Sacramento, heck yeah. Gotta be proud of something. LaForce has been homeless for nearly as long as his arrest record is old. His hundreds of mugshots represent convictions for crimes including petty theft, possession of ammunition, possession of a controlled substance, trespassing, illegal camping, loitering with intent to buy drugs, and most recently, arson, a felony conviction for which he is still on probation. Plus trash, piece of wood. The gasoline and rubbing alcohol. I quit drinking rubbing alcohol, start catching on fire, and it goes boom. Generally, people arrested that many times are it's a lot of drunk in public. The judges can sentence them to county jail. They can uh, mandate that they take classes. They can put them into treatment facilities on the in the streets. One option for Sacramento County judges is called the Serial Inebriate Program, sponsored by a medical center and other local agencies. 
It provides a 90-day inpatient alcohol detox and rehab program, specifically aimed at inmates like LaForce, homeless men and women with an extraordinary number of arrests. LaForce has left that program, as well as other programs, several times now. Well, I couldn't do the program. I had to get out. I was in the rehab, shaking real bad. I said, I'm going to get a beer now. Because, uh, yeah, believe me, my alcohol. It's a drain on resources from getting arrested to medical staff talking to him or dealing with him, the courts dealing with him, and he has no intention of stopping. Peter John has the officer dog. Mr. LaForce. Yes, sir. Welcome back. Uh, yes, I know it's only been about five days, but, you know, rehab didn't work, so I had to come on back. You don't try rehab, that's why. He comes in, we still interview him the same way we do every single time, even though we know what he's going to say. Yes. You talk about wanting to kill yourself? Hey, no. Need protective custody for any reason? Not at all. No gang association, no any... No, 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 I'm enemies. Okay, we're done. You got court tomorrow at 1.30. Okay, I think they're going to let me go. It's up to the judge. The judge is tired of seeing him. The, the judge? Which one? I don't know, all of them. <laughs> Thanks for coming back. Okay, that was the interview. That's it for me. You're doing it. Yeah! He enjoys what he does, and he'll tell you he likes it. He likes coming here, he likes seeing everybody. Does his thing, leaves, and again, I'll see you next week. Are you getting tired of coming to jail? No, I actually love it. Are you serious? Yeah. It's home. That's where I get my mail. It's, uh, it's been a long, winding road, but uh, it's not winding down anytime soon. It gets a little frustrating because the expense is all in the county for his uh, whatever he needs, his housing and clothing and feeding and transporting him to and from courts. It's all expenses that are accrued by the county. I kind of like you want the junk. It keeps me warm. It keeps me off the streets when it's raining out there. Uh, they feed me three meals a day. They're all hot. And the food's not bad. We have a Narcotics Anonymous and Alcoholics Anonymous classes. Uh, Christopher LaForce doesn't want them. He's perfectly happy where he's at, doing what he's doing, but they are offered halfway type houses they can go to, social workers on the streets to see if they want those resources. But he goes to the same areas, the same street corners, bumming money and yelling at people, and uh, sometimes he's drunk within hours of being out. The force is assigned a cell, but a problem soon arises. He repeatedly jiggles the door handle as he waits for a control room officer to unlock it. As soon as LaForce steps in, officers on the floor see a problem and rush to the cell. He's kind of jiggling the door handle before it opened. When the door actually opened, before stepped in, we could uh, observe his cellmate take a somewhat of a fighting stance. Uh, it was obviously agitated. No punches thrown, but like they're almost just mad dogging each other. And then we went up there and squashed it all. In May the Force, he can be overwhelming, you know, especially for somebody who is having a hard time here. Nobody's happy about being here, but in May the Force, he, he likes to live it like he's happy. He likes to have fun. He likes to enjoy it. And if people dislike being here and they're, they're sad or depressed about it, they'd get annoyed and it could cause an issue. Coming up. My little buddy right there, 1,800 how many? 1,087. Yeah, that's a lot of wrong choices. Chris LaForce runs into an old friend with a unique distinction of his own. And when I was locked up here, I was tired. They didn't have no programming. There was no classes for me to go to. A former revolving door inmate up, now helps others to stay out of jail. <laughs> While Sacramento County's main jail sits in the heart of downtown, 20 miles to the south, in the heart of one of the nation's largest and most productive farming valleys, is the county's branch jail, the Rio Casumnes Correctional Center. Turn right, going between the car and the bus. Like the downtown branch, Rio Casumnes also houses roughly 2,000 men and women. But here, the majority of them are already convicted of crimes and serving sentences. That's due in part to a 2011 law 
known as the Public Safety Realignment Act, or AB 109. The catalyst for AB 109 was the state's mandate and need to reduce their prison population with haste. They call it realignment. The idea being to realign lower level offenders to a more appropriate custodial setting. What they did is take the responsibility for thousands of inmates that would have been going to the state prison system and just said, well, now they're the county jail's problem. The law created new challenges for the county jails by requiring them to house thousands of convicted felons who in the past would have gone to prison. With many sentenced to at least a decade, they could be more likely to cause problems. But the law also came with significant funding for a broad range of job training and rehabilitation programs to help inmates stay out of jail and prison. They're administered through the jail's reentry services department. The goal of reentry is to reduce the recidivism rate. That's it. What I call it is, you know, get out, stay out. Nationally, more than 70% of inmates return to jail or prison within three years. But Ron Smith knows it doesn't have to be that way. Because 10 years ago, he was a revolving door inmate here. I know that sounds like, wow, how are, how are you here now? Well, when I was locked up here, I was tired. They didn't have no programming. There was no classes for me to go to. Of course, I used to play the blame game when I was here. <laughs> the blame game is still going on, but there's really something to lock into that's real, that's tangible, uh, and they can make a difference. Smith was in and out of Rio Kasumnas over a 10-year period on convictions including robbery, possession of a controlled substance, and possession of a stolen vehicle. He says it was all fueled by addiction, but he finally found help while out on probation. You know, I was on drugs and alcohol, uh, cocaine. Then I had epiphany. You know, I went to a drug program. And once I went there, they had, you know, introduced me to a new way of living. And since then, you know, it's just amazing to be able to walk around here where I used to be locked up at with the key to be able to help someone else. So they say, Ron, you don't understand it. You don't know, understand what I'm going through. I can say, wait a minute, I was here. I sat in the, I was in the same color shirt as you was, and now I know what it takes to be, live a better life. When I was locked up here, there was no counselor for me to communicate with. There was no program in place at that time. But with AB 109, when they get out, they can be a transformed individual rather than just doing time with no rehabilitation. This is Fancher. Yeah, this is Ron for reentry. Yeah, I was looking to get uh, Mr. Greggs, and if you can send him to gate eight, I'd appreciate it. Sure. All right, thanks. Rodriguez Greggs was convicted a week earlier of possession of a controlled substance while armed and possession of marijuana for sale. He was sentenced to one year and will serve his time at Rio Casunas. It's my first time being here, so it's kind of scary being here with people who got all these type of charges. This doesn't even seem like a jail. It seems like a prison. And then a lot of people, like, they live like this is their home. I can't live like that here. I don't feel like this is my home. And it's just really scary to me. But I just stay on my bunk and just mind my business. It's like a fish in a tank full of sharks. I've been here a week, and I haven't, I haven't ate all week but nothing tastes good. When I try to eat it, it comes right back up. And I don't want to be in the chow hall and it comes up, because that'll start a problem also. There's a lot of politics in here, and it's just certain stuff you just can't do. So today's session, we're going to be talking about your reentry plan and what that looks like. Okay. okay. So what that means is we're going to take a look at some of the things that you want to accomplish while you're here, and then some of the things you want to accomplish after you leave. Okay, is that fair? Yes, sir. So we got you started in your classes. You'll be going to substance abuse on Monday. We got you in Think of a Change. Uh, Wednesday, we got you in personal development. And now, is there some things that you want to accomplish, uh, some of the things you're looking to get out of some of these classes? A better, a better, a better understanding on, on my thinking mm -hmm. and to become a better man and a better role model for my kids. All right. Because a good parent wouldn't be in here right now. We'll put you in parenting every Tuesday and Thursday. Overall, his risk to generally come back is high. 
based on him being caught with drugs and a firearm. So based on that, tells us he needs some type of assistance managed in his life. All right. Come on in. Since Greggs has already completed high school, he will start in the second tier of programming, There's personal no development to classes to geared toward changing the way CPS inmates think. Eventually, he could take vocational courses developed under AB 109, such as welding or computer graphics design. He will now transfer to a dormitory-style housing unit with other program participants. On the other side of the jail is a much more restrictive housing unit for inmates who don't qualify for programming either because they have yet to be convicted or have had disciplinary issues. It's broken up with 26 tanks that uh, house from 8 to 10 or 12 inmates in each tank. There's one sink, one bathroom for 10, 12 inmates. They make do. Uh, life in here sucks. You got a lot more freedom in prison. You know what I mean? You get to walk the yard a lot. We hardly get yard probably one time out of the week two times if we're lucky. This is lockdown. You can't get outside these bars. There's nothing to do with him but read a book. And then you don't get any educational books at that unless you're blessed to have somebody send in something from outside. Jason Watley participated in the jail's programs during his last stay here when he served one year for credit card fraud. Six months after his release, he was arrested for possession of credit card making materials and must now serve an additional two years due to this probation violation. He says he's anxious to participate in programming again. On the other side of the facility, when you go to AB 109, the classes, it's just really good insight on what you want to be in, how you want to finish the rest of your life. Definitely not this way. Oh, most definitely not this way. before my time is up, I'll be able to get back to the programs. Despite earning several certificates for his classwork, Watley says he wasn't ready to apply that knowledge once he was released. He went back to manufacturing fraudulent credit cards until an unlucky traffic stop led him right back to jail. I was driving a buddy to his house. Instead of slowing down for the speed bump, I went around it. That's exactly how I got busted. And had everything in the vehicle with me. And uh, looked like a real ass. I got pulled over. So, as an AB 109 inmate, Watley could still get back into the programs despite being rearrested. But other factors, including his ongoing affiliation with the Crip Street Gang, could get in his way. I'm ready for change, and being that this is a part of my past, it's hindering me from being something better in the future. I'm willing to hang it up right now, actually. For my kids' sake, for my family. Are you saying you're done? I'm saying I'm done. Coming up. I didn't leave the program last time with any intentions of stopping what I was doing. I mean, how did that work for you? Jason Watley pleads his case for a second chance. And later. There's a little spider. They all call me Spider-Man, Spider, whatever. One inmate's love of spiders translates into a profitable jailhouse art form. Inside the two facilities that make up the Sacramento County Jail system, 4,000 men and women sleep on steel bunks with thin mattresses. For many of them, that's an improvement compared to their living conditions on the outside. They were at one time or another among the approximately 2,500 Sacramento area homeless. I pretty much surrendered myself, you know. I wasn't really arrested. I was saved because I was homeless when I got arrested. I started living at, in an abandoned building. I had a couple blankets, and there was a chair out there, and I'd fall asleep sitting up in the chair all the time. And I was always on foot. My feet were always killing me. I always had blisters. You know, I was homeless out there, so I didn't really have a spot to be, so top that was getting high, so. Mm -hmm. Now, this is what I call better than homemade, too. Mm. I feel like I'm a bum, but a lot of the people like helping me out, holding the sign out, and seeing people looking past me and shaking their head going, no, not today, you're just going to go drink it up with it. Chris LaForce says he has been chronically homeless for the past 20 years. 
And there's the people that drive by saying, Jesus loves you, Chris. And the kids are all waving to me, and that's kind of cool. I like that part. It just makes me feel good, you know. Just, just talk to them or having a pretty girl just smile at me is better than getting any money, you know. LaForce is back in jail for violating probation on his earlier conviction of arson. He hopes the force sobriety will help him reconnect with his mother, who he says he hasn't seen in 16 years. I just found out she's in Reno. I, I talked to her a couple of times, but not too much. If I knew I would get out of here, get on the bus, go see my mom right away, no stops in between anywhere, I would not drink. I'm going to be on the streets for a few days before I go see my mom. You, you can't be on the streets without drinking? Well, not at all. I'm an alcoholic, straight up, full blown, full blooded alcohol. Get done, heck yeah! <laughs> when the force first arrived, he nearly got into a fight with his assigned cellmate. I'll go run another lap. Now he's housed with an old friend from the street who knows all about La Force and his many arrests. My little buddy right there, 1,800 how many? 1,087. Yeah, that's a lot of wrong choices. But he's still not a bad dude. LaForce's friend has a distinction of his own. He only goes by his last name, Clayton, because his first name is an unpronounceable string of capital letters. My first name is an acronym. It's the first initial of all my brothers and sisters. D is for Dwayne, A is for Adrian, C is for Charlene, J is for Joyce, R is for Rana, D is for Dana. My father wanted a junior, so my mother named me after everyone. And a lot of times people try to make it a name. They try and say, well, how do you pronounce it? You can't pronounce it. It's not a name. Clayton is serving a 90-day sentence for violating his parole on an earlier conviction for possession of methamphetamine. He has witnessed LaForce's revolving door relationship with the jail and recalls the time he returned even before leaving the premises. The quickest when you sat in front of that door. <laughs> He said he did not want to go. Real bad. Yeah, he didn't want to leave. And he needed help. And he didn't know where to go get the help from. So I went and I sat in front of the jail. I had nowhere to go. It was raining. I just said, take me back to jail. I don't want to go. He locked anymore. the door where the officers go in to take you for booking until they came and arrested him. And he was back, like, within three hours, yep. four hours, something like that. You know, he's, he's like, I'm, I'm back. <laughs> yeah, you are. Your bunk's still open. <laughs> I've known him for what, about 15, 20 years? Really good 15 years. Yeah, I've run into him on the street a lot. I, gives me yeah. shoes when I ain't got shoes. He always gives me something to eat. Oh, uh, yeah. He, you know, I caught him on the light rail one day. I went shopping for me and my nephew, bought some brand new shoes. He jumped on the light rail. No shoes, no coat. So it's raining. Go, He's not a bad guy. He needs a little help just like all of us. Like LaForce, Clayton has also experienced many years of homelessness in Sacramento. For 10 years, I was downtown. I used to love it because it was a choice I made. I didn't have no bills. I didn't have no overhead. I didn't have to pay no insurance. I had a tent. I'm get, I had food. I had friends. And if society looks at me and says it's not right, I apologize to you, society. Sacramento, you know, I don't mean no harm, but so what? <laughs> I, I'm still going to be me. That's like, that's what I mean. Chris going to do him. Thank you, Clayton. Of course. My partner. There's no way to judge him. It, it, sorry, you know, it's wrong because he's just out there, you know, taking up space. But he's not. He's not taking up space. He is out there because he chose to be out there. Now, our community is just like any other community. It's just the homeless. We, our community stretches further than any other community I know. We go from California to New York. Any, any town you go to, there's homeless. That's still part of my community. Coming up. I got stabbed in the lung, in the throat. And in the job. The night Clayton decided he had enough of homelessness. And Rodriguez Greggs 
says no thanks to an offer to go home. I think in here they pay more attention to you and get to know you as a person instead of just, oh, as a convict. Due to mature subject matter, viewer discretion is advised. Morning at Sacramento County's Rio Casumas Correctional Center brings inmates to the outdoor rec yards. Once a World War II Army base, it's a hodgepodge of buildings, fences, and razor wire. The compound looks and feels more like a state prison than a county jail. And now it functions as such, thanks to a recent law that diverts thousands of convicts here from overcrowded state prisons. All these inmates will someday be released to the streets of Sacramento. So the new law also brings significant funding for job training and re-entry programs in hopes of providing them the help they need to not return. You know, when I was locked up, I had no real motivation. I see now uh, inmates that have some motivation that something is out there to help them and to do something different. Ten years ago, Ron Smith represented the problem he now hopes to fix. He was a revolving door inmate here, Hi, Jason. Ron Smith over in reentry. Since then, he has gotten off drugs, received a college degree, and is now the jail's lead reentry specialist. Everyone deserves a second chance. I received that second chance. Sometimes they deserve a third, fourth, fifth chance. <laughs> I, mean, I don't believe as human beings that we can give up on another plan. human being. We must plan for our sobriety because it has so many negative consequences. Rodriguez Greggs serving one year for possession of a controlled substance while armed and possession of marijuana for sale. It's three weeks into a series of classes Smith has selected for him. Because if you make a temporary decision that you're not going to come back, guess what? It's just only temporary. You'll be back. Greggs says he was recently given an opportunity to leave the facility on home detention, but has decided to stay. After I started participating in the classes, I gained a lot of knowledge. And that, that made me change my whole perceptive about the home detention because they got the classes out there, but I think in here they pay more attention to you and get to know you as a person instead of just, oh, as a convict. So if you don't have the mindset to plan for sobriety, then you don't know where you're going. Your mind is like the map. Greg says there's been another development since he first arrived. When I first came in here, I wasn't eating because I thought the food was nasty. But I kind of got used to programming in here and doing what I got to do in order to survive. So I eat everything every day. Every day, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Tastes better? Yeah, it tastes better now. <laughs> what I see from Mr. Greg's is I'm optimistic. I mean, that's the best way I can answer that question, because there's no concrete evidence that says, yes, he's going to make it. And here's the reason why, because he went to four classes here, and he went to, you know, parenting classes and the confidence, and got a certificate and everything like that. And based on that, he's going to be successful. I wish it were that easy. Inmates who go through the reentry programs can still reach out to caseworkers for questions and support up to one year after the release. But Jason Watley is proof that it doesn't work for everyone. You know, you heard the saying, in one ear, out the other ear. It's hard to stop whatever you're doing and do right, especially if you're used to doing wrong for so long. Watley participated in reentry programs during a prior one-year stay here for credit card fraud. Six months after his release, he violated his parole when he was found with credit card-making materials and is now back for two more years. And at that time, I wasn't prepared to come home and change. So I never said leaving that program, I was going to change and do something better. It's like, ah, uh, yeah, well. Watley has been assigned an inmate job passing out meals. It doesn't pay anything, but it has other benefits. I get to be out all day. I'm not locked up. Do a little work here and there. You know, it makes things easier. It makes time go by much faster. Tonight, I have to clean showers after everybody's done. But other than that, it's pretty chill. Watley says he would gladly give up his job 
to participate in re-entry classes again. He was in our program before. He did five months in it, so, and then he went out and he got re-arrested. Mm. Deputy so, Hamilton is one of the re-entry program managers. I get a lot of requests to go into the program, so I go out with Ron or another caseworker and we assess the inmates. We talk to them, we see where they are today, what brought them into custody this time, and yeah. what's the difference. Try to assess whether or not they're ready to change. Yes, sir. All right, Ron. Based on their responses, based on my experience and the environment they're in, all kind of tells a story. And that story we can interpret to try to help them. Let's talk about what you learned from the program last time you were here. Um, I gathered a lot of knowledge from the program. I just didn't, uh, I didn't apply it. I didn't leave the program last time with any intentions of stopping what I was doing. I mean, how did that work for you? It didn't work. Nothing worked. Nothing worked that my own, taking my own steps and not following the steps that were provided for me, I chose to shortcut and not use the steps that were provided. Did you finish the parenting class? Yes, I did. Last time? Yeah, with Ms. Darla, I did. Right when I finished was close to my exiting date. I was told that I was going to receive my HALT certificate, but I know I didn't have enough time before I left. It was supposed to be mailed to me. I didn't have an address at that time. So I don't know how to go about getting that back. Or... That's focusing on certificates, and we're having a conversation in jail, and that's what we're trying to eliminate. Right. It's not about the certification. And you kind of proved it, but it's about transformation. Exactly. What brought him here? It goes back to criminal mindset and, and the cognitive skills and making poor choices. But, you know, if he's gang, then that's a lot. It's a huge component. Who you're hanging with, your peers. Have you talked to Officer Gillock about the Quest program? I haven't. According to Mr. Watley, he's a crip. Quest is a gang diversion program, so we're going to have Officer Gillock, who runs the Quest program, go and talk to him and see if, if she, you know, he's a good fit, good candidate for her program. I, I pretty much heard enough on this. I, I think so, too. We're going to go back. We're going to uh, talk your case over, okay? And then um, I'll probably have uh, Officer Gillock come out and speak to you. Okay. Okay. I see some inkling to want to change. He wants to do something different. Of course, when they get in this environment, they all want to change, and they have that spiel, if you will, to do something different. But where the rubber meets the road is when they get out. Right, have a good right. one. Thank, right, you. thank you. Coming up, Jason Watley's future comes into focus. And... Got somebody new come in, put on their bed, to wake up to it, it's a ride. That's for the newbies, though. One inmate's eight-legged infestation. Sacramento County Jail inmate Earl Herzog, serving 90 days for domestic violence, doesn't qualify for any of the jail's re-entry programs due to his short sentence, though he has used his time here to develop a new interest. I was a little spider. They all call me Spider-Man, Spider, whatever. Someone found the spider. It's been alive for about, I don't know, three weeks, almost a month now, a little wolf spider. I throw some fruit flies in here. He hasn't eaten for a day or two now. Um, guaranteed he attacks him. But Herzog is best known for a very different kind of spider. These are uh, toilet paper spiders. I use thread, toilet paper, and um, hair nets. And some people like them colored, some people like them real looking. Uh, I prefer, I guess, color is a little more exotic, I would say. These do look real. Once you sleep and you wake up, let somebody new come in, put it on their bed, to wake up to it, it's a ride. You know? That's for the newbies, though. I'll show you right here. The, the first process would be we would start out on the legs. I ready to get it down as low as I can. I'll rip a piece of, this, a piece of hair net off. I got it already all set up, ready to go. And then I'll wrap it with the thread to get it as tight as I can. The thread comes out of the underwear. This is the part that takes the longest right here. I'll do four, and then I'll tie them all together. And if you look on these real closely, you can see that it's actually four instead of eight. And they're all just bent. And it makes it, it gives it that real look. The next part, I'm going to do the, the butt and the body all in one. I'm going to add all the detail to the legs right now. I use a coffee to color it or a colored pencil if they want it colored. Now I'm going to tie the body onto the legs. I try to go, like, I'll crisscross. I'll go across. I'll just do a little bit of everything. As long as they're, they stay on tight, that's all. That's what I'm, I'm shooting for. And there's your sack counting toilet paper spider. 
Chris LaForce has been caught in a web of his own making. It's comprised of alcoholism, homelessness, and endless stays at the jail for the past 20 years. He also has abused meth, which has all but destroyed his teeth. I smoke it, and I eat it, and I shoot it up, and I snort it, and it all comes down to a little rock sitting on my tooth, kind of erodes it away, you know, and sucking on one of them rocks, it kind of destroys my teeth real bad, and puts holes in my gums and stuff like that, and it really is terrible, you know. I'm going to be 43 next month, and I really want to stop this, this highway to hell before I end up in hell. If you looked at all my mug shots, you would see how I progressed from being a kid, being a dope fiend, became a real bad drunk. Emmy LaForce, on the surface, may seem like he's happy and funny and laughing and joking, but it, it is sad that he's been here so many times and that he feels as if we're somewhat of his friends or family. He's just unable to be rehabilitated here, and we're just kind of holding him in hopes that one day he'll learn. Um, but in the 1,087 times that he says he's been here, he hasn't learned. The force is currently housed with a friend from the streets. Clayton has also spent years combating homelessness and addiction. I used to live right in front of the porno shop in a tent, right there, selling drugs and coming back and forth to jail for it. Uh, first, I used to sell marijuana. Then I went up to selling crack cocaine. And then I started selling crystal meth. And then, you know, I started doing the drug. And they had a saying, first the man takes the drug, then the drug takes the man. You know, don't be your, your best your best customer. Yeah, I was that. <laughs> I was my best customer. Did you ever sell to Chris? No. He has too many issues for me to give him another issue. He's a partner, he's a friend. While addiction is still a part of Clayton's life, he says homelessness is now in his past. I get help and I pay my rent. I have a big brother who looks out for me, you know. About three years ago, I had a bad incident happen that made me have to get off the street. I got stabbed three times. I got stabbed in the, in the lung, in the throat, and in the jaw. Clayton says he was walking through a part of town where the homeless congregate when a stranger approached him. And he just stepped out from behind me, so, you know, just like another person walking down the street. He's just walking behind me. And I didn't pay him no mind. And it was like I felt a pinch. Then I felt a pull. And I, I was falling. And he hit me in the jaw. And I was able to fight back. And a lot of people were sitting there like, oh, 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 gee, I, oh, we seen that you were fighting. Look like you were fighting for your life. I was, stupid. Why didn't you help me? And that was it for me. I knew I, I can't keep doing this. We deal with people, so many different people, that a lot of times you think this person might be coming to help you, and they're not. It happened. They prey on the homeless. The force will soon be back on those same streets. Due to his current jail stay, he has 42 days of sobriety and will be released in another week. I'm about to get my head shaved and get my mug shaved. I'm gonna feel like a new man. As he has upon prior releases, La Force holds out hope of visiting his mother. Hey, you got a sport looking like almost a real human being, not part of the bushes. He says he has only spoken to her a few times in the past 16 years, and that she lives about 100 miles away in Nevada. It's going to be a real big emotional cry right there to see my mom, and I really love her a lot, and hopefully she'll take me back in, which I'm sure she will. She'll help me out with just about anything she can, so I want to get out and see if my mom will get me a lawnmower so I can start mowing lawns again, feeling good about myself, not feeling like I'm a bomb or nothing like that. We call for luck. Yep. I clean this up. Feels good. I feel like a new me. I want to get out. Maybe I'll just go get a lawnmower and try to be a different person. Not too bad, gentlemen. I kind of like it. Coming up, Chris LaForce returns to the streets. Sacramento County Jail's Rio Casumnes Correctional Center. Jason Watley 
has been given another chance to turn his life around. I'm gonna back down. I'm gonna back down from everything that's wrong. Keep myself from coming here. At one point in time, um, you know, coming to jail was nothing. You know, we laugh at. I'd laugh at it. Uh, I just go do the time and come back home. Watley says he has decided to end his affiliation with the Crips and has been accepted into Quest, the jail's gang diversion program, co-founded by Deputy Gillock. They are busy all day during class with some curriculum that directly addresses gang membership, how their lives have been affected by gang violence. They also have access to parenting class, which I think every person should have. It also has a gang component in their curriculum. I don't want my daughter to come home and be like, Daddy, this is my boyfriend. And I look at him, and the first thing come out of my mouth is, this mother <laughs> is just like I used to be. Right. Or I am if I don't change. Right. This is Watley's so, second time through the jail's reentry program, biggest fear. after he was released and then because rearrested six months later. In jail and being involved in gangs and... Th then in the class, I was just kind of cocky, arrogant, like, oh, yeah, well, I can get this on the street. Then I would like to ask, where's the payoff? What's going to be the payoff? What are the end results? Leaving his gang could make Watley a target for violence. But he says he is sincere about wanting real change. Even so, he can't completely forget his past. Being in a gang, it's not something that I choose to run behind. It's the choice that I made. You know, once you join the military, you're going to be a vet for the rest of your life. Although you, you're not in the services anymore. So, cripping is going to be something that is a part of my life. I just, I still love my people, but I, I can't, I can't, I can't push that mo anymore. I can't push behind the movement anymore. And I see, I see the path in front of me. And uh, before it was dark, I understand what my responsibilities are as a man. Definitely not gang banging, um, but I wish all my, all my buddies and friends luck. 20 miles to the north at the county's main jail in downtown Sacramento. Chris LaForce is about to make a transition as well. One he has made a thousand times before. Once I start being a cunning person, like God wants me to be, then it's going to change my life a little bit better. The day has arrived for his release. Surveillance cameras capture LaForce in his changeout cell and later making his way off the grounds of the jail. LaForce says his goal is to reconnect with his mother. But 36 hours later, he was back in jail. Be home again. <laughs> thirty-six whole hours. You were gone thirty-six hours. I got me and got home. What happened? I, I got drunk and died again. You know. So you were using two? Me? Yeah. Christopher LaForce uh, was brought back into custody last night for being drunk in public. What number of arrests is this man? One thousand eighty-eight. What the? F yeah. You're proud of that? I mean, when you, when you get kind of retarded like me, you know, mentally ill a little bit, you know, and heck yeah, I'm proud of it. Nobody else has ever done it. I just want to stay in jail forever. I'm a force. Yes. Come to control. Roll everything up. The force's latest violation will result in another 180 days in jail. A new chance to sober up, and perhaps someday to see his mother. Heck yeah. is really scary to me but i just stay on my bunk and just mind my business it's like a fish in a tank full of sharks a new inmate fears the worst being in a gang it's not something that i choose to run behind it's the choice that i made and it's something that i joined a gang member asks for help to change his life but first he must convince a staff member with plenty of his own experience on the inside so they say ron you don't understand it you don't know understand what i'm going through I can say, wait a minute, I was here. I was in the same color shirt as you was, and now I know what it takes to live a better life. And... You're done, heck yeah! He is very comfortable here. He's been here so much, it's like his second home. 
The most arrested man in Sacramento, heck yeah! Gotta be proud of something. Nestled along the gleaming skyline of downtown Sacramento is a block-wide, nine-story tall building that exemplifies the term, no frills. This is the main branch of the Sacramento County Jail System. Housed inside are some 2,000 men and women, most of whom have only been accused of crimes and are awaiting trial or the resolution of their cases. One of two jails under the supervision of Sacramento County Sheriff Scott Jones. The downtown branch contains the main booking department where new arrestees are processed, booked, and more times than not, sobered up. We have about 58,000 bookings a year in this county, and we track folks that come in to custody either intoxicated or under the influence of drugs. It's remained fairly steady between 75 and 80 percent of the folks that get booked in are under the influence of, of drugs or alcohol. Well, I see we have the usual cast of characters. They're under the influence, they're unstable on their feet. We're going to place them in this cell for their own safety. It's a padded room in there. Um, once they've sobered up enough to finish the process, they'll get pulled out of this tank and moved on. Thirteen hours earlier, the sobering cell was occupied by the man who has probably spent more time in it than anyone else over the past 20 years. Chris LaForce was arrested for public intoxication. His latest probation violation on top of dozens of prior violations and convictions related to drugs or alcohol. His arrests are well over a thousand arrests for our county. Uh, Coming gets brought in, he's very vocal, very loud. Heck yeah! Very intoxicated. He knows most of us by name. <laughs> he is very comfortable here. He's been here so much, it's like his second home. He's homeless out on the street, so th this is almost better than what he's got when he's out. I was like, right on. <laughs> Out on the streets, he's known for a drunken public, lighting things on fire, sometimes being combative, meth use, drug use, alcohol use. But he knows that when he does that, he comes here and he has a place to sleep, a place to eat. It's kind of a drag on how our system actually works, knowing that we're going to arrest the same person with the same charges over a thousand times. Other than that, obviously, bring him here and keeps him off the street away from the public, so that's the good part of it. LaForce remembers the day one of his arrests made the local newspaper. That was in 856 arrests. The metro section of the Sacramento Bee mentioned my name five times. Heck yeah, they said you got her done. The most arrested man in Sacramento. Heck yeah. Gotta be proud of something. LaForce has been homeless for nearly as long as his arrest record is old. His hundreds of mugshots represent convictions for crimes including petty theft, possession of ammunition, possession of a controlled substance, trespassing, illegal camping, loitering with intent to buy drugs, and most recently, arson.